It's time for the No Nonsense Roundtable. Insights to capture your imagination from people you know and people you'd like to know about. Each week, a different guest from a different walk of life. Now, here is the host of the No Nonsense Roundtable, Dom Genova. This is Dom Genova, host of the No Nonsense Roundtable with a special edition show. Since I started the show in 2019, we've aired over 200 episodes and been delighted to see our audience grow and grow. It's certainly because of the guests I have. In 2022, we had Grammy winners, Emmy winners, members of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, members of the Rochester Music Hall of Fame, TV news anchors and meteorologists, professors, one being an Oxford professor I recorded while he was in his office in the United Kingdom. We've had the mayor of Rochester, a sheriff from Florida with millions of YouTube viewers, veteran disc jockeys, producers, and authors. And here for the fifth time is Bob Duffy, Rochester native. He started his career as a police officer, then became chief of police, Rochester mayor, lieutenant governor, and now CEO of the Greater Rochester Chamber of Commerce. He was my very first guest and is always a treat. Well, Bob, welcome back. Uh, My first guest, 200 and... Eight shows ago, something like that. It was January 26, 2019. A lot of water under the bridge since then, huh? Don, first of all, it's great to be back. It's an honor to be here for the fifth time, and uh, we all look exactly the same since then. <laughs> yes. I, I think my most the most memorable uh, show, I don't know if the show itself, but the location, uh, I parked the car. It was during COVID, the first days of COVID. I parked my car underneath a cell tower someplace. <laughs> we did it. We did like, oh, what's the world going to be like from, you know, here on in and yeah, the shut down and all the other stuff. <laughs> I, I was parked in a car at the corner of uh, Clover Street and Monroe Avenue. Yeah, and, and I, I was in Honey Eye Falls. There's uh, there's a hill there with a cell tower on it that looks like a, a silo. And I can, I'll never forget that. Well, we got through that. You know, so far, so good, man. You've had a great run, and it's a pleasure to be on this show. It really is. Well, thank you so much. It's an honor to have you here, and uh, one of the things about the show is uh, uh, guests beget other guests. So there's a lot of people that have come on the show because you have come on the show, especially the first time like that. It was very kind of you, and, and I appreciate it. So let's talk about 2022, since you always start off uh, the year for me. So uh, good, bad, and ugly. What? Tell me uh, your spin. I think actually a, a, a mixture, a lot of good things uh, went on last year. I think there were, in the business world, the Chamber of Commerce world, I think there was a lot of successes that, that we saw with members and businesses and growth. Uh, we saw it with our own team. Uh, we received a five-star designation by the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, uh, which was a, a great thing for our, our team uh, achieving. Um, Rochester, I look at a lot of teamwork, a lot of people focusing on the future, uh, the economic development leadership and community leadership uh, it works together. I, it's great to see the mayor and county executive uh, have a great relationship. Uh, our business leaders and associations get along very well. Uh, we're at one time, I think we're in deep competition, but there are, are challenges. And, and as you know, uh, issues like public safety uh, are still resonating very strongly here. Uh, having 76 murders last year was not something that any of us should be proud of. And, and it's something that we need to work, uh, I guess, much more effectively and, and much more deeply to try to address. Well, since you brought it up, uh, I was going to go in a little bit of a di- different direction. But uh, that that is uh, that is on the top of the mind of, I think, everybody. Because I, I guess I put it this way. When I turn on, on the TV in the morning and look at the local news, it's it's always... Shooting, 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 shooting. You don't, you don't hear about the rest of the stuff that's going on, but shooting, 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 shooting. I, I, I mean, comment on that. Well, it's true. Uh, so many good things do go on, but the, the very difficult thing is they often get pushed to the side or ignored uh, because of those headlines and, you know, as the old adage, if it bleeds, it leads. And often with in the media, that happens. And, you know, what it also does, and I've had this discussion on many fronts, uh, when you have shootings and homicides and carjackings and all this, and they're not new. Uh, they've gone on for decades, but I think we have a much higher level uh, of those today, unfortunately. Uh, it also creates a sense of fear among people. People might not want to drive uh, to a business or home or a place in the city. They might not want to patronize a restaurant. That's why the economic development and public safety and education, those three, uh, I guess, legs of a stool are all linked together. 
And, and often those stories do have an impact. And the response to those issues uh, has an impact, whether it creates confidence or not. And I'll tell you, during the last year in 2022, I received calls from some of our, our biggest business leaders in the community here uh, calling and just concerned about crime, about uh, the issue of, I just mentioned, uh, the every single day it seemed like there was a shooting. I mean, literally, when you have 300 plus shootings in a year, it's not somebody firing a gun at somebody being actually shot. Um, you have 76 murders. And, and I was go back. Uh, I used to always cringe because I, I go back in my first career when you had police officers shot when people would say, well, it's a non life threatening injury. I would cringe because wherever you are shot in, in your body, you have a life altering injury, mm -hmm. whether it's hand, foot, body, leg, you may survive, but the rest of your life is not the same. So you figure in the city of Rochester last year, I think just under 400 actual shootings where somebody was hit with a bullet just reinforces how much. And I just, the last point I will say is a lot of things you see in the media, which scare people, unfortunately, so many other things are not reported or not put out there publicly. So uh, there is a, a fear mechanism, which we really don't want to see grow. Uh, we we want to see our businesses thrive, our neighborhoods thrive. We, we are committed to you know the city and really the Monroe County and eight surrounding counties. That's who we serve. Um, but we have to address these issues at a much higher level. And it, it's, you know, often falls on sometimes the, the mayor, the police chief, the county executive, the sheriff. It's much deeper. It really takes our, our elected officials, our state officials. There has to be a much more alignment. And he, he looked to the largest city in New York State, uh, Mayor er Eric Adams, who I know I just saw recently on New Year's Day at an event. Uh, Mayor Adams is a retired NYPD captain. Uh, and you hear him in, in New York City crying out for help, that he needs help with the issues of public safety. So... I do think we have to push this, and and Dom, I'll, I'll say just very quickly, as a chamber president, as a chamber of commerce, we don't fire these grenades uh, publicly. You know, it's it, it gets you nowhere calling on people publicly to do this or that or having these press conferences uh, because sometimes it has the exact opposite effect. But we consistently and quietly really often plead for help on this, and uh, I'm just hoping in 2023 we see some changes. One of the things you said was it wasn't a life-threatening uh, shooting, uh, life-threatening, but it, it, I, I can't imagine a shooting that wasn't life-ending uh, uh, intending. You know, and them, it's, as somebody who shot at somebody is not shooting at them to shoot in the leg or the shoulder or something that's not, th that person intended to kill that person. I agree. No such thing as a warning shot on the streets. Right. Uh, it's in, in, But it's the, the life uh, threatening injuries they refer to it, they're life altering, but you're right. When, and you think of, you know, say just under 400 people actually shot last year, 76, I think it was 76 were killed uh, almost all by gun violence um, in our city. And when you look at those numbers and you wonder how many times were, were guns fired where nobody was hit or a gun was pointed and people were threatened. Right. Um, and, you know, and sometimes the focus goes on to pressures of legal gun owners. I have to say this too, in, in my career, I don't think even 1% of the crimes, even less than that, I've ever seen in my entire career, going back to my police career especially, were committed by a legally registered handgun. Mm -hmm. And what we're talking about are illegal guns. Uh, gun owners, by and large, with few exceptions, I, I find, are responsible. They take care. They lock their weapons up at home. They take care of them. They're responsible. They, they, they have a permit. They can have that permit revoked at any time. But the focus has to be on the illegal guns. And, and sometimes that does not take uh, you know the prevalence in terms of some of the things that we're seeing. Well, and, and that's a very good point because it's not easy to get a handgun in the state of New York. It is not. It is not easy to get certain kinds of handguns. And um, uh, I, I guess I guess now uh, the, the mayor is suing the gun manufacturers. Yeah. Uh, well, G give me I, give me your comment as a former uh, police officer. Give me in uh, police chief. Give me you know, give me a read on that. I, I know the intent of that. I, I know, but I would say this: uh, it, it, car manufacturers aren't often sued for accidents or fatalities. I think it's the person driving it, and you know. Gun manufacturers manufacture guns. They do. Uh, car manufacturers manufacture cars. Uh, it's the person that wields that weapon or wields that car that is the issue. And, you know, uh, and sometimes these have, you know, of effects. And I've seen these lawsuits before, but in all honesty, you have to focus on it's the person that's doing this. Uh, and, 
you know, guns have been around for a long time and certainly America gets you know, hit on its love of guns. I'm a gun owner, but I will say I am not an NRA member. And I also, uh, I, I'm one that I don't see a need for people, your average person to have assault rifles. I just don't. Uh, but I certainly understand and protect and, and uh, you know, would certainly protect and support legal gun ownership. I think it's been uh, a, a big issue and one that often prevents uh, many serious crimes. Okay, we're about ready to head to a break, and uh, I, I have the big question of the day uh, for you right after that. I'm going to change direction just a little bit, and we'll see you right after this. Well, you're back listening to the No Nonsense Roundtable. I'm Dom Genova here with Bob Duffy, and uh, anybody who... Uh, doesn't know Bob's history. Uh, he's, uh, well, where were you born? You were born here in Rochester, right? Born in, in Rochester and uh, grew up in the 10th Ward in the northwest part of our city. Okay. And uh, police officer, police chief, mayor, uh, and uh, lieutenant governor, and now uh, CEO of the Greater Rochester uh, Chamber of Commerce. Now, we were talking a very, very serious issue. Uh, it was gun violence in, uh, in, uh, in Rochester. And uh, I would like to bring up a you know a big world issue for you uh, that's been uh, in the paper these days. And uh, uh, so this um, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle thing, where do you stand? <laughs> <laughs> where do you stand on this one, huh? I will tell you where I stand on this one. <laughs> and my wife and I had this conversation. She has watched a Netflix series. I have not. I did watch this 60 Minutes uh, segment uh, last week. Uh, my feeling is this. Families have a lot of things going on, whether you're the royal family or any family here locally. I've never believed or thought it was a good thing to air your dirty laundry about a family publicly. Deal yeah. with it internally. Uh, don't go out uh, and air it publicly for whatever reason. Uh, it is your family. And I would say that once you ring the bell, you can't unring it. And uh, that, that's my perception. And, and it's not nothing against Harry, Meghan, the royal family. I have no connection other than reading an occasional article or seeing some news. But I, I just don't think it is helpful when you are, you know, conducting international interviews in the media about your father, brother, sister-in-law, grandmother, airing things that really should be more private. Well, and, and that's sort of your brand. I mean, you taught me years ago something, and I, I, I take it to heart. Actually, uh, it's in this, uh, this book that I'm uh, attempting to, to write, and uh, you say uh, constant gentle pressure, which is, which, is, which is really great. You know, you look at the days of uh, Ronald Reagan and, and Tip O'Neill. You know, you didn't have this vitriol that you have today. The motto is gentle pressure, relentlessly applied. And, you know, I, I think you get nowhere screaming or yelling. I mean, I, I had two of the greatest parents a kid could ask for. But I also learned early on, uh, yelling back at my parents, being disrespectful, uh, got you nowhere. Uh, I was once grounded for 30 days for breaking a window. Uh, and about the 25th day, I was eight years old. About the 25th day, I went to my mother and said, can I go out and play? And she went right to the calendar. And she said, no, you have five more days to go. And I, I often said, my mother never believed in parole or probation. It was mm -hmm. uh, truth and sentencing. So I learned early on <laughs> that when you did something wrong, uh, you paid for it. And I honestly just, I, I believe that the same principles apply today. Uh, you know, we could be, we could disagree, but be respectful. Uh, and I, I just, I listen to people and I may totally disagree, but I always respect someone's opinion. And I believe me, I've been in probably more community meetings, interactions in, in my career than most people could ever imagine. And they weren't always pleasant, but I would always listen and I would always understand and try and, and, and learn because perhaps that person who I totally disagree with said something that, you know what? That person is right, and, and I'll learn something from it. And I think we that's a lesson in life I have learned, and I don't like shutting down. Uh, I, I never, on social media, you know, I'm on Twitter and, and mm -hmm. Facebook a little bit. I'm not a selfie person by any stretch, but uh, I will tell you, uh, I don't think anybody has ever seen me uh, go after somebody and be negative on social media. I think, to me, to be positive, to be, you know, try and, and show as much good news as you can is something that I we try and do in a world of bad news. Um, but I think being respectful uh, and going back to your original question, that is your family. Mm -hmm. and, I, and you know what? I'll say this. My personal I love my family. I have uh, two older brothers. Uh, you know, I couldn't imagine saying something publicly about them. Not that there's anything wrong to say. My chamber family, I wouldn't go out and say something publicly about. Uh, if we had an issue, deal with it inside. And, you know, the old saying, uh, praise in public, criticize in private. And I think Harry and Meghan should, should look at that because 
I think there's no going home after this one. I think <laughs> this one, they might as well stand a Netflix series because uh, I don't think the the king is going to welcome them back with open arms. No, and and I, I guess the thing I saw on, on TV, he goes, "Well, I hope we can reconcile." You just, you just, you just dropped a bomb on them. Oh, I, I hope we can be friends now. No, no, it's that, not the way human nature is. That is but, not going to happen. But isn't that society all told though? We just, we just, you know, we we see that in Congress. We see these fringes both sides uh you know liberal and conservative and and people are just you know it's like goldfish in a goldfish bowl they're eating their own you know it's but it's it's society and i think that is uh, at the core of where we're at today i think the mental health issues the fighting the infighting the inability to uh, agree you know governor hochel has a candidate for uh chief judge in new york state i don't know this man uh, he obviously is a distinguished judge, but there is this vitriol uh, already. And what I've read so far, there are three decisions people disagree with out of thousands of decisions. Mm -hmm. And because, you know, you decide against this in this one situation, you're anti everything. And I think, uh, it, the, you know, I don't hate to use, I don't want to use the word cancel culture, but I just think that people are so hard on, on others and, if you disagree on one point, you're through. And sometimes that's politically. If you go against the the, uh, the party, whatever party it may be, and, and Dom, I'll tell you, on a political uh, position here, I think the far right and far left are ruining this country. Uh, most of us are in the, I, I would say this the terminology, we're in between the 40s. Right. Uh, 40, you know, figure in a football field, 50 yard lines in the middle, 40 either side. I think people have different views, but they're not the extremes. And these small numbers of extremes on both sides have really taken over the conversation. And, you know, the silent, silent majority has to stop being silent. And I think it'll get us different people in office, different outcomes in legislation and, and a different quality of life. Oh, I think you're absolutely right. I, it, it might be surprising to hear this, but I have been told by people that they will not listen to the no nonsense radio show because of the station I'm on. Yep. You know what the show is like. This is no nonsense. I don't. I don't. I, I. I don't beat people up or ask them to come to my point of view. I just want to illustrate different points of view. And you're saying that you will not go someplace where there's ten thousand listeners to state your point of view because of the station. And I think that's absurd. I agree with you. I mean, people are telling you, don't read this article. Right. Don't go to this publication. Don't watch this channel. To me, you never know what to believe nowadays and see on national news. So I, I watch all the news. I look yep. at social media and I draw my own conclusions as best I can. Uh, but when you shut down someone's opinion, uh, because people on all sides have opinions and they should, and in perspectives, they should be listened to. Uh, you don't have to agree with everything, right. but it, it, you listen. And I think we become stronger and, and much more educated and perhaps uh, understand issues much more deeply if we listen to both sides. Listening to everything on one side, and I think those, and I will say this, if people are afraid of you listening to the other side, then I would say, they're not confident in their own position because they don't want you to hear any other side. Uh, so I, I think in many ways they are trying to uh, control what we think and feel. And, you know, uh, I'm not a liberal or conservative. I'll tell you what. And, I'm, and I got accused of and I am believe me, I'm, I'm a centrist. I, I, I absolutely agree because I'm the same thing. I'm not a Democrat. I'm not a Republican. I'm a Republican on some issues and, and a Democrat on other issues. And, and I don't want to be labeled as one or the other. You know, I uh, had Patty Singer on the show a few weeks ago, you know, a reporter. You Best know. wiffle ball pitcher in the city of Rochester. <laughs> uh, yes, she's fantastic. I says, how do you judge the veracity of something you're reading to see if it's real news or not? She goes, I look for the adjectives and adverbs says, when I start seeing adjectives and adverbs, now I know somebody is putting some type of bias into the reporting. I thought that was brilliant. Add exclamation points. That's exactly <laughs> right. Well, uh, we are heading into the news break, and we're going to come uh, right back, well, after the news. Well, welcome back. You're listening to the No Nonsense Roundtable. I'm here with the president and CEO of the Greater Rochester Chamber of Commerce, former uh, lieutenant governor, former uh, mayor of Rochester, former police chief, former police officer, Bob Duffy. And we were talking uh, some serious topics before the break. But, you know, let's talk about uh, 2022 
and uh, when went on, what you have planned. Uh, I, I, you know, I see these press conferences a lot, and I'm one of these uh, sort of oblivious people. I, I see it in a couple of seconds; it really doesn't uh, sink into me sometimes, and I have to see it two or three times. So, so let's let let's talk about the the progress that. Uh, that the the chambers made in 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 Rochester in 2022, and and some of the things we have uh, to look forward to. And one of the things I'm interested in is this eclipse that you have planned a couple of years. You know, wow, what a what a coup that is. I mean, yeah, know. we just we thought we'd plan an eclipse uh, this year. We thought it was what a nice thing to do in 2023 and plan it. But <laughs> that is it's going to be a big event, and uh, I I think our our great Rochester Science and Museum Center is going to be kind of leading the the local energy for this. We're going to be supporting it, uh, but. It is great. But going back to your point, uh, Dom, a, a lot of what we do is behind the scenes. We have a great chamber team. We focus on supporting our members, our businesses. So there is legislation. There are applications for things. There are support mechanisms businesses need. We What we don't do is publicize and get up and say, hey, we did these three things last week. We work very much behind the scenes with you know, government officials, local, state, federal, which we all have excellent relationships with on both sides of the aisle. Um, we get things done consistently. We work very hard. We're a 24-7 operation. Uh, we, I think we, we're there to support our members. We support businesses, and we support our community. And we... We have our, our teammates are involved in charitable uh, activities. We just, we listen and help. We've been around since 1887. Uh, and that's how far back the Chamber of Commerce goes. And so here we are today really trying to do the same mission. But uh, people often ask, what does a Chamber of Commerce do? And, and what, I guess one thing we do consistently, we just met with uh, 25 CEOs and leaders of local manufacturing companies last week is we ask them, how can we help you? What what do you need? How can we best assist you? Then we go to work. And uh, we, don't, we don't say no. We don't promise results. Uh, we, we promise 100% effort. Well, let's talk about some of the things that are going on or uh, in progress or about to happen in, in Rochester over the next uh, year, two years, three years. I mean, there's a big revitalization of downtown and whatnot. Let's educate people to some of these things. I think there's great efforts going on downtown. Uh, we have the Innovation Square, the Galena Fan, is doing a great investment. Uh, we're drawing much more young people, uh, college graduates, college students downtown. We actually have a program in the chamber uh, called Campus Rock, part of our talent effort, trying to create more relationships with college kids. Uh, we're also trying to create a tech hub, trying to create more uh, uh, investment into our innovation economy here. And we're working uh, with leadership and, and throughout our region here. We our economic development leaders all work together. We have this umbrella group we call it Rock 2025. We're all members of. It's you know the chamber, a visit Rochester, GRE, uh, our U of R, RIT. A lot of partners. You know we meet, we talk, we work together. I think people have to realize. We're not some Rust Belt city or community. This is a super smart, uh, highly educated uh, area here. U of R, RIT, 17 other colleges and universities. I mean, the brain power, the innovation, the startups here are incredible. We're trying to really create more attention, more investment for that. Uh, and a lot is going on right now. And I want to say one thing. There's a book called Jump Starting America, written by two MIT professors. I think it was back about three or four years ago. They studied 102 regions around the country. They're looking at who will be the next tech hub, uh, getting away from Silicon Valley, Austin, New York City, Boston. What's what's the next round going to look like? Out of 102 that they studied intently, uh, number one in the entire country, Rochester, mm -hmm. New York. And sometimes we don't even begin to think we, what we have here. And I, and the thing I want to add to talk earlier, you know, about crime uh, from growing up in Rochester, from serving this community for a bit, most of my life, I would say in the poorest neighborhoods in Rochester, I've met some of the greatest people you would ever meet. So I, I never want people to have this perception of a city based on things happening. Uh, there are great people here, great, great, great people everywhere. We just have to get above and beyond the negative and take advantage of these incredible resources that we have. We have two of the best healthcare systems you would ask for anywhere in the country for a community our size. URMC and Rochester Regional, they're working very super well together. I mean, we are blessed with these great, great resources. So I think that's, we're trying to really expound upon that. And I would say at one point, 
too much competition went on internally in this community uh, from all these different organizations. I think right now the key word for 2023 and really for 2022 has been collaboration and then add teamwork. And I think we're seeing progress and great results from that. Well, when Malik was on the show, he uh, he said that uh, he thought a lot of people had an old mindset. We're never going to be a company town anymore. We're never going to be you know a Kodak town, but we can be a town of companies. And I thought that was probably a pretty good way to word it, don't you think? It's a great analysis. Uh, we have 1,300 members in the Chamber of Commerce, and the perception is we represent big companies. Over 90% of our membership are small companies, small businesses. That that really makes up Rochester. And these small startups that come out of U of R, RIT, uh, Brockport, Fisher, Nazareth, all these colleges, some of these companies are growing and growing. We have a lot of success stories from these incredible graduates coming out, starting mm. something. And looking ahead, uh, we are a great tech hub, a, a great med tech hub. You know, the whole gaming industry, you have uh, RIT, yes. has the, the Magic Center. That's a burgeoning industry. A lot of super smart young men and women coming here, uh, creating this uh, ecosystem. There's a lot going on. And I will tell you, anybody who's not been in downtown Rochester, drive around. I mean, the changes that have happened, the housing going up, the interloop on the east side has been filled in. There's a lot happening. Straw Museum of Play, uh, I think, is one of the top uh, attractions anywhere in this part of the country and even, even into uh, eastern Canada. Uh, I've taken, you know, I've taken my kids there in the past. I've now taken, I have grandkids. Uh, you, even on any Sunday, Saturday, any any day of the week, it's crowded. It's, it's phenomenal. So I think what we should do is you know, maybe beef up the pride. Uh, we need to create much more of, of an intense effort to really create more hometown pride and, and collaboration here. We, we focus too much on the negative and, and there's too much uh, divisions that come up when actually it, this is a, it's a phenomenal community. It really is. And I, hey, listen, we all have choices to, to live somewhere else. I choose to live here. I have no intention of moving. I think it's just something we I love this region. And within an hour's drive, you could have uh, a great urban core, restaurants, uh, foodie communities, breweries, wineries, lakes, rivers, mountains, parks. I mean, we, we have everything right here that people would want. And i tell you just one quick story. We have a, a program in a, in a chamber called Rock Remote. We are offering uh, incentives for people to move out from outside at Rochester here make a move. And they could be working remotely uh, for a company in California, Texas, New York, uh, whatever. Uh, people say, well, who wants to move to Rochester? Everybody's moving out. Well, I will tell you what, 49 states, people from 49 states have applied. We can't even keep up with the applications. Uh, we have, I think, 25 or 24 have moved in so far. It's it's all privately funded, thanks to people like Rob Sands, Danny Wegman, and others. Mm -hmm. Well, I, and, and I totally agree with you because um, uh, I'm from Long Island, Nita's from outside uh, Syracuse, and we were living in North Carolina back in 1994, and we made a decision to come up here. The, the quality of life is really good here, and I think one of the things you have to have a sense of is how bad it is other places when you, you know, if you're in New York City area, yes, you know, your you're raised ranch is three quarters of a million dollars, and a trip to the airport is 45 minutes or an hour to get there, and, and and uh, the taxes are high and the crime is, is, is just as bad. And, and, and this has got a great quality of life. And I think people have to understand the Museum of Play and the Eastman Theater and the Kodak Theater and you got Jiva and you got uh, RBTL. I mean, all of this, this is not a Rust Belt region. This is, this is pretty cool. You know, now, my, the term Rust Belt, I had this conversation in a meeting last week. I think it's in the minds of the New York Times and other places. We are not a Rust Belt. Uh, and uh, right. Buffalo is not a Rust Belt. Rochester is not a Rust Belt. Syracuse is not a Rust Belt. There are great things going on upstate everywhere. Yeah, and we're going to get uh, more into this after this. Well, we're back with Bob Duffy, the president and CEO of the Greater Rochester uh, Chamber of Commerce. And uh, we were talking about the things that are going on in Rochester, about to go on. And I have this list of things. Uh, there's a downtown revitalization initiative, Rock the Riverway, 
we have something going on with Constellation Brands. There's Broad Street, there's Innovation Square, and then a little while from now we have an eclipse. So <laughs> <laughs> let's let, let's start talking about these things in in particular. So you got the Downtown Revitalization Initiative. Let's uh, tell people what that is. If you look at Main Street uh, and you go back to uh, at one time the Renaissance Square project, which uh, the, the county stopped many years ago. Uh, a lot of the buildings are old, decrepit buildings, especially at Maine and Clinton, which mm-hmm. is really a cornerstone of downtown. So uh, New York State, uh, Governor Hochul and her team just awarded uh, $10 million uh, to there's more than one developer into the buildings at Maine and Clinton. There's like there's three buildings involved with the funding and they'll be revitalized. So you look at the old wig store and Bauman's Jewelers, that the old stores that are no longer in, in, in business. Uh, those buildings are gonna be revitalized, not torn down because it's, you, have to, you wanna restore the character uh, of that, that street. But that is coming, and the developers involved are fantastic. So that's some state funding coming there, which I think is going to transform that corner. And you look across the street, you have uh, the Metropolitan, the, the Galena family. They've developed that. Sibley's uh, wind development has totally developed that. Kitty Corner is the whole Parcel 5, the former Midtown Plaza, which... I still get hate mail about, uh, but that is now Midtown is gone. And you have great developments along there. Uh, Buckingham Properties, for the most part, has, has really developed that. So the last corner that needed it was that corner of uh, really Maine and Clinton. And that is coming. And, and that's exciting. Yeah. And, and when is that going to start? When's the groundbreaking? It should start going? soon. Uh, right. I'm not sure when a groundbreaking will happen, but uh, I was involved with the committee on that. It was a, a intensive process for months. Uh, the mayor led that and along with the uh, Department of State, Secretary of State, uh, who was heavily involved with that with funding. So it was really, it's a, it's a great project, great effort. And I think it's going to be really the uh, cherry on top of the Sunday for that, that four corners oh, yeah. in Rochester up, the, up at uh, Clinton Avenue in Maine, because finally those buildings will be revitalized and they're exciting. Yeah, I, I mean, it, unfortunately, it looks like when you come down downtown Rochester and you see that particular corner, it's like seeing somebody with a, with a spot on their tie. Yeah, you know, yeah. It just doesn't look right. I mean, it needed needed that. Yeah. And you look at visitors coming here when they come out of a yeah. hotel and walk down the street. You want them to feel yes. like, wow, we went a wow factor. And there's a lot of wow factors throughout downtown now. This is going to be one that's going to be a, a phenomenal statement being made in the next year. Uh, Rock the Riverway? Rock the Riverway. Uh, that's it's been going on for now uh, probably a little over two years. It's fantastic. If you look at the skateboard park, uh, the other side of downtown, that's been a huge success. But all along the river, the promenade, uh, there's revitalization going really from Andrew Street down uh, up to Court Street. Uh, you're going to see a whole promenade. You're going to see bro- uh, Broad Street between Exchange and South Avenue transformed when this is over with, with a promenade. Uh, you have Constellation Brands coming down downtown. Their headquarters will be in the old Lawyers Co-op building. 350 employees, thanks to uh, Rob and Richard Sands, uh, Bill Newell's the CEO. Constellation Brands could go anywhere. They're making a statement to come downtown. And right across from Blue Cross Arena, which is adding on uh, a new restaurant, adding on some expansions there, thanks to the Pagula family. So there is a lot going on. And outside my office, I look at the the Rock the Riverway project right now. It's the rooftop of the Crossroads Garage, the whole walkway uh, all along the river. That's being really transformed right now in the winter. And you just, you're just you seeing change before our very eyes, which I think is very exciting. And that also a major project coming with, with New York State funding. Uh, Broad Street. Broad Street. Uh, at one time, we had hoped to rewater the canal coming down Broad Street. And then ah. uh, and back in, uh, when I was mayor, 2008, a thing called the recession hit, which all money stopped. Uh, but now it's being revitalized, not to the same degree, but uh, it'll, it'll be more of a open walkway, uh, very pedestrian friendly on Broad Street. So coming out of the arena, um, I think it's going to create much more of a, a much more walkability, much more you know, a, a gathering places uh, on Broad Street, on the river. It's a phenomenal view here if you're ever downtown seeing the lower falls and heading down toward high falls uh that's all coming again thanks to state funding uh, some aspects of the uh the library the, the the original library uh their walkway and promenade on the riverside has already been transformed and, and one thing i want to mention too we're hoping that some additional funding comes for our convention center uh our convention center needs a makeover it is mm. a focal point for visitors coming here it is a huge money maker 
uh, for Rochester. It you know draws conventions, and I will say Jim Brown and his team do a fantastic job there. They are such great ambassadors uh, for visitors coming here, but it's tired. The, the last time it was, when it really was created was back in the 80s. It needs to be upgraded. And if you go to any convention center in other cities, you can go to mm. Charleston, I mean, any major city that draws conventions, it's head and shoulders above. You want to make a statement for people coming in. You want to draw right. not just you know the lower level conventions. You want to draw big ones here to Rochester because they they're economic drivers. They come hotels, restaurants. It, it creates jobs. So I think that's the last part of this uh, project. I know there's funding in the stream right now, uh, but I, I'm advocating usually for a convention center. And right across the street is the old Radisson Hotel. Uh, a lot going on there. I'm not sure when that an announcement will happen, but there are developers involved that's going to be redone and the goal at least at the last conversation i had was a hotel additional meeting rooms for the convention center and also uh i think some condos and, and perhaps uh, a private housing at the top part so it, a lot of changes going on right mm-hmm. now a lot of things to get excited about in 2023 well it, it, give me a little eyewash on the innovation square too well uh, i go back to the, the galena family has done a phenomenal job the xerox tower was vacant xerox pretty much has, has moved out they have a small contingent out in xerox uh but the, the galena family took that over uh they have transformed it into a uh, really uh, almost a magnet for college students. U of R right now has a lot of college students living there. Uh, they've redone the theater. There's businesses coming. Uh, you have a lot of these young uh, from gaming and some of these burgeoning industries drawing there. I, it's a, a magnet. Other colleges are considering sending students there, but you know, the whole thing, you want these 19 colleges and universities, you want these incredibly gifted young men and women to stay here after they graduate. Mm-hmm. So Innovation Square is really giving us a leg up and keeping people downtown, getting them acclimated and hopefully keeping them when they graduate. And uh, there's a, a little bit of a golf tournament coming in a couple of years? Uh, small, uh, called the PGA <laughs> Championship. Uh, it's coming in May. Uh, we are heavily involved with that. Uh, actually, uh, a chamber, GRE, visit Rochester. We're all going to have a chalet there. Uh, that will draw international attention, not just national, international attention to Rochester, New York in May. Uh, and uh, in May, we could be at 75 degrees. We could be at 45 degrees. We're hoping for 75. Uh, but PGA has been a fantastic partner to work for. Uh, I Every tournament they've come, I'm not a big golfer, but I've been to the Ryder Cup here, a PGA championship, senior PGA. Uh, nobody does it like Oak Hill and Rochester. It is going to be the event of the year in 2023. Well, uh, with that, let's get on the record uh, how to get in touch with you, how to get in touch with the chamber, your your website, uh, location, all the other stuff. How Go about- to greaterrochesterchamber.com on our website. We have a great website. Uh, Shan Ely is our, our marketing communications director. Uh, you can connect her any one of us our emails are on our web page you can you know listen uh i answer email at five o'clock in the morning i answer email 11 o'clock at night we are we are not a nine to five operation we have a tremendous team of the chamber and there's really nothing that we either can't do or get get you connected to get done uh so if you are a business whether you are a one person business or you have five thousand employees reach out to us we're here to serve you and since 1887 this organization has been in existence and originally Original members included George Eastman, uh, both Bausch and Lam, uh, places like Morse Lumber, Gleason Works, uh, Zweigels. I mean, all, we have original businesses, Genesee Brewery, were all around back then. They are still here today. And I think our founding uh, our founding partners back that will be happy with what uh, our great team does today. We're, we're here to serve you and would love to hear from you. And with that, Bob, uh, thank you for coming in uh, the, the fifth time. Uh, maybe we can have you on in a, in a few weeks, uh, maybe take you to a ball game at the Red Wings Open Day or something like that. Listen, so. I'm always happy to come back. Go Wings. And also, hey, wait, before we finish, go Bills. Go Bills is absolutely right. Well, thank you ever so much for coming in. It's, a, it's an honor to have you here and always interesting. And everybody, uh, next week, 10 to 11 on News Radio Web 1180, it's the No Nonsense Roundtable. Well, thanks for watching this YouTube. If you liked it, please like and share.